Hello, my name is Fiona, and I am a certified teacher and a Praxis coach with Study.com. If you are preparing to take the Praxis Elementary Education Science Physical Science Test 5001, Subtest 5005, then let's review some of the types of questions you may encounter on the exam. What is an atom? A. Little spheres that everything is made from. B. The basic unit of a chemical element containing protons and electrons in the center and neutrons orbiting the outside. C. The basic unit of a chemical element containing protons and neutrons in the center and electrons orbiting the outside. D. The basic unit of a chemical element containing electrons and neutrons in the center and protons orbiting the outside. E, molecules chemically bonded together. Let's eliminate A and E right off the bat. A is not a scientific answer and E is a chemical bond. So now let's look at the remaining three and the actual definition of an atom. So the atom is the building block of matter with a nucleus made up of protons and neutrons with electrons orbiting. So let's go to B, chemical element containing protons and electrons. So that's not correct. C, chemical element containing protons and neutrons. So, so far that's good. Surrounding the nucleus is a cloud of electrons, and we've got electrons orbiting the outside. So that is our correct answer. Pure substances are further divided into elements and compounds. Which one best describes the rust found on a vehicle over time? A, a compound, B, a chemical property, C, a mixture, or D, an element? Let's look first at what rust is. Rust is ferric oxide or iron oxide and is formed through a chemical reaction. I'm going to work backwards on these. Okay, an element. An element is a simple substance that is not able to break down or transform into another substance. So that is not it. What is a mixture? It is a physical blend of two or more substances and not a chemical reaction. So that is not it. A chemical property. A chemical property is a characteristic related to a chemical reaction, but not the change itself. So that's not it. And a compound. A compound is made over time through a chemical reaction with two or more different elements. So it is indeed a compound. In order to tackle the next problem, I want to explain Newton's second law of motion, which states that acceleration is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the object's mass. So force is equal to mass times acceleration. Acceleration is equal to force over mass, or force divided by mass. So as force increases, so does acceleration. In other words, acceleration is directly proportional to the force and acceleration will decrease as mass increases. Put another way, acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. So now let's look at the question and answers. Newton's second law of motion can best be described as a is acceleration is directly proportional to the net force acting on an object and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So right away, we know that is the correct answer. The amount of energy necessary to pull an electron away from an atom is known as A, photon energy, 
B. Binding energy. C. Ionization energy. D. Ground state energy. Or E. Electromagnetic energy. Photon energy is the energy carried by a single photon, so that is not correct. B. Binding energy. This is energy that holds the nucleus together. That would be incorrect as well. C. Ionization energy. This is the amount of energy required to remove an electron from an atom. Let's look again at the question. The amount of energy necessary to pull an electron away from an atom. Ionization energy is the answer. I hope I was able to answer your questions so that you can get a better understanding of the topics you can expect to find on the test. Please remember to like and subscribe to this channel so that with study.com's help, you will feel confident and prepared on exam day. Bye for now.